Okay, so here we're looking at exercise 12e, question 11, and we're going to start off by trying to draw the diagram that's described in the question. So what I'll do is I'll draw my uh, two wheels, All right? So we've got kind of one circle there, and then a bigger circle there. And so we're told that this one has a radius of 15, and this one has a radius, actually put the other side, this one has a radius of 25, and we're also told that the distance between these two centers, so I'm gonna use red for that one, so we're told that this is 60. All right, and the rest is sort of up to us. So we're told here that we have a belt that's required to pass tightly around the pulleys without crossing. So let me pick my pen here. Okay, so basically we're looking for something that goes like that, then goes around through there, then comes back to here and goes around and finally is, stops there. Okay, so not the best diagram in the world, but that's fine because when you're doing this question, you won't draw the best diagram in the world either. It might be better than mine, but that's not the point. So there is one really fundamental fact that you need to know for this type of question, and that is that the belt will leave the circle. So this is, let's say, the last point that the belt touches the circle. At that point, we will actually have a right angle here. Okay, and the reason is, well, because the belt here is acting as a tangent, all right? So at the moment the belt leaves the circle, we have a right angle. And so we have one there, and we also have one here. Now, the same is true down the bottom, so we could draw kind of the same thing down the bottom, but we don't really need to. Because it's a symmetric diagram, we can just consider the top, and then whatever we do with the top, we'll just double it for the bottom bit. All right, so we have um, these two right angles. We also have, now let me draw this 60 as a hard line. We also have this 60. Now, if we have a straight line down here, so this thing here is a straight line, and we have these two lines here, both of which form a right angle to the straight line, we know that they must be parallel. All right, so if they both form the same angle to that straight line, these two must be parallel. So we can actually take this whole thing, right? We can take this whole thing and redraw it out here. So what we effectively have is, and I'm gonna flip it actually, right? So I have a straight line here. I don't know its length, let's call it X. Then I have, and that's this yellow one, Okay, so just so it's clear what I'm drawing. So I've just taken the yellow one from here and put it over here. Then I have two straight lines, both at a right angle to X. Okay, now I do know the length of these because they're just the radius, right? So from the center to the outside, by definition, is the radius. So uh, given I'm flipping it, I'll still keep. So that one is gonna be my smaller one, so that's 15 and that one will be 25. So again, let me make it clear. And then I've got my line that runs between the two centers of the circles, and that I know is 60. Okay, so what I can do now is I'll draw another line in here that's parallel to X. Okay, so it still has a right angle because it's parallel to X still has a length of x, but now I've created a triangle with 60 x, and I know that this right-hand side here has to be 10, because that's just the gap between 15 and 25. All right, so effectively, we're looking at this triangle up the top, so this thing here, and what we really care about is the angle in here. Okay, so let's call that theta. The reason we want that angle is because that is the angle that is in here. And if we know that angle, 
life just becomes a lot easier for us. All right. So just using very basic trigonometry, um, we should have that cos of theta equals 10 on 60. And so therefore theta equals inverse cos of one on six, which very roughly equals 80.4059. Now with a question like this, I anticipate a lot of intermediate steps. So a lot of steps that I have to do before I get to the answer. And when I do that, I wanna use at least four decimal places, okay? But I've got at least one part of my question done now. So I'm gonna get rid of, well, no, I'm, not, I'm actually gonna write in here, 80.4059. Okay, so um, that helps us, but not all the way. Um, finding out X would also be useful because X is this distance here. So it's the distance of the belt, oops, it's the distance of the belt between the two circles, both up the top and equally down the bottom. So it won't, what it won't give us is this thing, right? It won't give us the outsides of the circle, but it will give us the two belts in between. Well, X is really easy because it's just Pythagoras' theorem, because again, we have a right angle in our triangle. So X is just, so X squared is just the, nope, not the square root. Um, x squared is 60 squared minus 10 squared, which gives us 3,500. And so therefore x equals square root of 3,500, which is 10 root 35. Okay, so I'm gonna keep that as an exact value for now. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that because that means I've worked out, so I've worked out this and I've worked out this, right? So both of those are now done. So all I need to know is the arc length of the belt on each of the circles. I'm gonna start with a bigger circle first. So again, I'm looking right now at this bit here. All right, so hopefully that's clear. So let me call that length um, A1, arc length one, that being the longest arc length. Our A1 is equal to whatever this angle here is, right, whatever the angle of our sector is. Um, and we won't use theta because we already have theta as a variable. So we're gonna use phi instead, just a different letter, doesn't matter. On 360 times two pi r, okay? So our phi is going to be the whole circle. So 360, take away two theta. So take away two theta times two times pi times the radius, which is 25 for this one. And that is all divided by 360. Okay, so since I'm running out of space, let me just draw a line here and I'll copy that down to the bottom. So I've got A1 equals 360 minus two theta on 360 times two times pi times 25. Um, now, 360 minus two theta, just put that into your calculator. We've got our value of theta. And what we end up with is 199.1881 on 360 times 50 pi, which gives us approximately 86.9122. Again, for the moment, I'm keeping it to four decimal places, or at least four decimal places. You can just store the variable in your calculator if you want. Um, because I know that there'll be a few more steps to go. Okay, so now I've got most of the stuff done, right? So I've got this thing done, I've got my X's done. So the last thing left is this arc length here, which we'll call A2. All right, so A2, we're gonna do the exact same way. Now, what we can notice is that if this is theta here, this angle here has to be 180 take away theta. Why? Well, because we have two right angles. And if you have a look here, so if I trace all this with yellow, I actually form a quadrilateral, I form a four-sided shape. So if I form a quadrilateral um, and I have 90 plus 90 plus whatever this is, this last angle has to be 180 take away theta, okay? So 
um, given that this angle here is 180 take away theta, these two together are going to be 360 take away 2 theta. So in other words, this angle, so the one we want for the second arc, is going to be exactly um, the complement of this angle. But to say it a different way, this one plus this one should be 360. So given for A1, I had, oops, given for A1, I had 360 minus two theta. For A2, I am just going to have two theta. Again, because if you like, the, the two angles should combine to 360. And since I have 360 minus two theta, here I should have two theta. Okay, so I've got two theta on 360 times two times pi, this time times 15. Again, I put that all in a calculator and I end up with 42.1005. And so now I've got all my elements. Okay, and so length of belt is equal to two times X. I have two X's because again, one for the bottom, one for the top, plus A1 plus A2. So what that should look like is two times 59.1608 plus 86.9122 plus 42.1005. Put that on a calculator and you should get 247.33. And that's it, that's our answer. Um, we probably should have meters or centimeters or something. So let's have a look. We do have centimeters, so we should have put centimeters. Okay, so the takeout out of all of that is that this rule of whenever you see a question about a belt going tight there around a wheel, you are basically looking for where the tangent is in the circle. And so there you will have a right angle. So we had a right angle here and we had a right angle here. We also had to notice the quadrilateral in order to work out the angles. So the quadrilateral, and also it always helps to copy out that quadrilateral somewhere else. So you're not working within the confines of the two circles and you can draw up this nice triangle inside the quadrilateral and solve it from there. Okay, so that's it.